But I want to talk to you today about love's lifestyle. Love's lifestyle. The foundation of Covenant Love Church has been, it was laid, of course, off the Word of God, the foundation of Jesus Christ being born. That is the rock of our, of our salvation. Uh, that is the rock of the foundation. But then we build on that. We build on the foundation. The foundation that we built on when I was in prayer and asking God, what do I lay the foundation of, of course, Jesus? And then what do I lay the foundation? What do I build off of that foundation? And the Lord took me over to 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. And God really started dropping my heart. And I saw all the different areas that the Lord said that so many people and so many of his ministers build their churches upon. And of course, we know Jesus builds the church. But then, you know, there, there's in there the gifts of the Spirit, supernatural miracles, uh, and, 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 and speaking in tongues, and all of those things, like prophesying, and all of those things. And in 1 Corinthians 13, the, the Apostle Paul, when he's writing about the Spirit of God, he says this. He said, you can have all of these things. You can have the gifts of the Spirit, powerful supernatural manifestations, uh, people being healed left and right. He said, you can even build your church off of faith that moves mountains. Mountain moving faith. All of that is in the scripture. All of that is great doctrine. All of that is great teaching. But then he says this. And then he brings over to uh, prosperity. If you've got all of this stuff, and give it away to everybody. And then he makes this statement. He says, but if you do not have love, if the motivation of that is not love, he said, you can have all of those things in operation. And he said, to me, it's nothing absolutely nothing you find it in 1st Corinthians 13 it's, it's, it's nothing and, and he said everything must be done and motivated out of a heart of love why? because God first loved us and he loved us so much that he, that he allowed Jesus to go to the cross and died and then when Jesus was hanging on the cross most amazing statement to me in the world Jesus is hanging on the cross and he looks at all the people who just abused him, brutally whipped him. Uh, I mean, the Bible says you couldn't even recognize that he was a man. And the Bible says that he looked at them and he said, Father, forgive them for they don't even know what they're doing. And this is a revelation that many of us must understand in the body of Christ is that you and I were born into this world with a sinful nature. And the very actions and the things that we do, we really don't understand it. Because it's the power of darkness, the sinful nature, and, and the spirit of disobedience that operates on the inside of us. And while that spirit is on the inside of us, there are so many things that we can do motivated by the course of this world, motivated by the spirit of disobedience. And if you want to know what scripture that is, and don't shout, yeah. And if you want to know what that scripture is, it is Ephesians, the second chapter, verses 1 through 3. It says it right there. So there are people still operating today just like you and I were because everybody is born into the world with a sinful nature. Everybody because of Adam. And so they are doing things and behind the scenes they don't know it but they are being orchestrated by the powers of darkness. And, and so that's the reason that the Bible tells us in Ephesians the 6th chapter it says you don't wrestle with flesh and blood. You don't wrestle with flesh and blood. And then it also says in, in um, 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, verse 3 through 5, it says this, the weapons of our warfare are mighty. They are not fleshly, they are not carnal, but they're mighty in the spirit for the pulling down of strongholds. So the things that we do as Christians, it is motivated out of our hearts being changed. If other hearts are not changed, they will continue to act the way the enemy wants them to act. And lots of people can be hurt. Lots of destruction and things can take place. It is the church's responsibility. Nobody else has this responsibility. It is our responsibility to preach the gospel and to tell people about Jesus. Nobody else has that responsibility. N nobody else can do that. Only we, the church, can do it. But if we get caught up 
in just what can God do for me? What can I get out of God? Then basically what I'm doing is I'm looking inwardly constantly. And I'm thinking about myself and I'm not thinking about other people. But see, the, 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 the Bible and the gospel and the Spirit of God is totally different than that. The Spirit of God came on the inside of us not so we could just keep Him to ourselves and not just that we would look inwardly to ourselves, but the Spirit of God came on the inside of us so that we can look outside of ourselves and see what He sees and we are the answer and the solution to it. And one of the things that He's called us to do in the church is to walk in unity. And you cannot walk in unity except through and by the Holy Spirit of the living God. You can't legislate unity. Unity is not a learned behavior. Unity is a heart response to the Spirit of God. And so, I want you to turn in your Bibles to Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Speaking to us as born-again believers, he says this, I therefore... The prisoner of the Lord. I love that. He is sit, sitting in a Roman jail, locked up, and he didn't say a prisoner of Rome. He said, I'm a prisoner of the Lord. What does that mean? He said, well, I'm teaching and talking about Jesus, and I'm locked up for that. So I'm actually not a prisoner of Rome because now I'm still writing and getting the gospel out and telling people, you know, how to live and what God wants them to do. So I'm just a prisoner of the Lord. Love that. He said, so he's, he's talking now to us and he says this. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord beseech you. And that word beseech means this. With every fiber of your being, with every all the strength that you have he said I beseech you to walk worthy of the calling which you were called with all lowliness and gentleness that has to do with humility with long suffering bearing with one another and by the way long suffering we don't like that word we would rather have short suffering or no suffering amen but it says long suffering and you know as well as I do that sometimes you're going to have to suffer long with certain people you know some of you work with those people some of you live with those people some of you meet those people but the Bible says and that is a characteristic and an attribute of God God is long suffering and so the only way that I can be long suffering is God help me in this particular area of my life so he said, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit. Notice he said unity of the Spirit. It's not that God wants us to create unity. Unity has already been created. It has already been created by God. And so God says, what I have established and what I have given to you in my body, he said, I want you endeavor. It's your responsibility now. I've given it to you. Now it's your responsibility uh, to keep it. So he said to keep the unity. The word keep there means also to guard it, to protect it, to keep the unity of the Spirit. How do we do it? In the bond of peace. Which means that, what did Jesus say? Bless are the who? Peacemakers. He didn't say blessed are the peacekeepers. He said, blessed are the peacemakers. There's a difference in a peacekeeper and a peacemaker. A peacemaker goes out to make peace. A peacekeeper is just keeping something that has been given to them. But a peacemaker will see where there is, there's injustice or something is wrong. And a peacemaker will be a reconciler and go in and try to reconcile something that is causing people uh, uh, to fight over, to be in strife over, like a mediator. And that is a ministry that God has given us. It says that in, in 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, uh, verse beginning with verse 17, where it says that we're new creations in Christ. He says, now 
you are an ambassador, you are a minister, every one of us, every born again believer, you are a minister of reconciliation. You are to go out and to let people know that God, that God is saying, go out and let people know that I have reconciled the whole world through, uh, through Jesus to me, to come into my family. I've done that. You go out and tell them. Those that are hostile toward me, those that are enemies toward me, just like you and I were at one time, he said, now go and, and ta- tell them about reconciliation. Tell them that they now I have, what I've done through Jesus is now I, I want them to come into my family. I love them and I want them to be my friends. And only the church can do that. Nobody else can do that. So we can, we, we, you know, we, we can do one or two things. We can just... We, we can sit around and, 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 and complain and murmur about things and not do anything. Or we can look at things and we can start praying. And folks, I'm not talking about prayer where somebody just says, Oh, Lord, please bless them. Please do so. I'm talking about serious where we intercede and we pray. Let me, let me share this with you. Same thing I, I told the first service. Do not tell me that God cannot turn everything around. Don't tell me that. What kind of Bible are we reading if we just think, oh, uh, nothing would ever be the same? God said, I am a restorer of the streets to dwell in. God said, I am a repairer of the breach. God can restore. And that which the enemy has destroyed and and everything the enemy does, God can restore can repair it. God can restore it. God can bring things back. If God can speak and create a whole world, don't tell me that He can't turn a nation around. Don't tell me He can't turn a city around. That's the God, the great, mighty, majestic, all-powerful God that I read about every single day in the Bible. See His mighty acts. So don't, don't listen to other voices that are telling you, oh, this can't happen. And quit listening to the naysayers and, and the negative talkers. Listen to what God says to us about every single situation. He said, keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith. One baptism, one God, Father of all, who is above all, through all, and this proves, this proves that Jesus was from southern Jerusalem. You know why? Listen to this. Above all, through all, and in y'all. It's right there, in you all. If, if, if he was from northern Jerusalem, it would say this, and in you guys. So we know. Amen. Don't write me. It's, I know it's not in the Bible. I'm just throwing that out. Okay. So the Bible says this. Walk. This is so important. Especially in the day and the time we're living in. Walk worthy calling that God has given us. Walk worthy. And 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 so so the Christian life, our life is described as a walk. It is not described as we sit down and do nothing. It's not described as a couch potato. It is described as activity. It's described as movement. It's, just, it's described as advancement, as progress. It means this. It means to make the use of every opportunity. And it also means this. Listen to this definition. It means to conduct oneself in representation of a group or family. And we are family members. God is the one who created us. And God is the one who created us with color. That's the reason that nobody should ever be ashamed of the color of their skin. They should embrace, they should embrace the creation. This is the way God created me. Just the other day, uh, I I was uh, having some work done on on my mouth and 
and, and the person uh, that was doing it said this to me because they knew I was a pastor of a multi- multiracial church and, and they said and, and they said, well so how, uh, how are you doing during this time and I said I'm doing great I'm doing how's your church doing they're doing great they're just walking everybody we're, we're all doing what we're supposed to be doing we're walking in love and we're praying and, 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 and then the statement was made to me well you know love sees no color and I said hold on just a minute I said I respectfully disagree with you. and the person looked at me and they said what do you mean you disagree with me I said well first of all Love created all colors. And I said, God is love. And God is the one who created the beauty of color in this whole world, including our skin, everything. And I said, when I look at the human race, I see beautiful color. I see color. And I see it because that's the way God created it. And God created us to embrace every single person. I said, you know, I I said, this is, I I said, the, the one thing that we forget about is this that every one of us bleed red. Every one of us. And the Bible says in the book of Acts 17, chapter, that God made all nations from one blood. From one blood. And I said, and and not, and I I said, and, and not only that. Not only is it one blood, but I said, guess what? I said, inside your body, everybody has kidneys. You don't have a problem with the kidneys? Do you know what color the kidneys are? Well, no. I I said, well, that's because you're a periodontist. But I said, kidneys, I said, everybody has a heart. I I said, there's a liver. There's gallbladders. There's... I said, in other words, what I'm explaining to you is that inside, we all have the same things. I said, the only thing that's different is the outside. That's it. And I said, and when we get to the place that we start seeing a difference in a human being just because of their skin, I said, then that tells me that we have been educated in a way that is not from the Bible. It is not from the Bible. Here's what the Bible tells us concerning that we're all family members. Every single one of us, every race of person. It says this in Ephesians, the second chapter, verse 19. It says, Now therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Notice that we are no longer strangers and foreigners to the kingdom of God, but we're all in the kingdom of God. We are fellow citizens, just like we are fellow citizens in America, okay? And in America, we make up every single race and every ethnic group, just like heaven does. And he says, and he says, and members of the household of God. Every single one of us are members of the family of God. So he said, so while worthy of the calling that he has given us as God's children, we are to live in a manner that reflects the credit and the honor and the obedience and glory upon the family and the Father. The honor of every single family is in the hands of the children. Because when your children go out of your house, they reflect your family. The things that they do will either bring honor or dishonor upon the family. I, I, was, I, I was living in sin for years in my life growing up and I'm I, I, to, to my to, to my uh, disheartening I brought dishonor many times to my family because of my actions and my deeds my name was not known as a name uh, in our in, in, in our town or, or other places that I went uh, my name was not known of, of bringing goodness and kindness it was known for other 
crazy things. It was known, it was known for sinful things. And the thing that we have to look at is this. We, all of us, represent the family of God. What we talk about, what we say, the things that we do are a reflection upon the Father. It is a reflection upon Jesus. It is a reflection upon whatever church that we attend. It is a reflection upon the body of Christ. And, and we are supposed to reflect and, and, to, and, and to bring credit for the, for the life that Jesus gave. We're, we're to operate to bring honor and to bring glory through our obedience and our love. So therefore, everything that I say or do is going to be a reflection on my family. And I must always remember that wherever I go and whatever I do, I am the Father's child and I am a member of the family. Wherever I go as a pastor, I'm representing you. Wherever you go as a member of the uh, of Covenant Love Church or a member of the body of Christ, that whatever you do, whatever you say, however you act, is a reflection upon that church. It is a reflection upon the body of Christ. I want to bring honor and glory to my Father. I want to be a reflection that reflects Jesus to everybody. Not that I'm perfect. Not that I don't make mistakes. I, I am in a growth process just like everybody else is. And I'll continue to grow until the day Jesus uh, either comes back or I go by the way of the earth. But, but in my growing, I continue to mature in the things of God as the Holy Spirit begins to teach me. So, so, so to do that, I want to make sure that I feed myself the Word of God because that is the will of God. If I don't feed myself the Word of God and I'm looking in the Word, which the Bible says is like a mirror and it reflects to me the image of Jesus because Jesus and the Word is one. And the more that I read the Word of God, the more, and I get it in my heart, the more that I'm changed. And the Bible says that we are to be conformed into the image of Christ as we grow and my question is for my own life that I take inventory and I examine myself am I growing and becoming stronger and more like Jesus in my life every single day is that happening to me or am I imitating those around me who don't know Jesus and I'm becoming more like the world or the culture than I am more like Jesus. And that's the reason the Bible says that I am to set, I am to set my affections and my passions on the things which are above, not the things that are on this earth. Because if I set my passion and my affections upon the things of this earth, then those things will actually become an idol in my life and I will start pursuing them and worshiping them more than I do Jesus. So I must, I, I must feed. I must continue to feed myself to draw, grow strong in the Lord and the power of His might. The other day, uh, I, I told the first service that the other day there was a, a, a poll, a survey that was done uh, across the nation to so many churches and uh, Christians. And the poll came back to this, that the majority of Christians in this poll, the majority of Christians, majority of Christians read the Word of God maybe once or twice a month. And I, I started thinking about that. Let, let's just say that it was once a week. Let me ask you this question. How would you do physically if you only ate once a week? How would you respond to things? Would you have the strength to do things? Would you be sharp in the mind? Much less, let's go to once a month. How would you begin to function? And how would you begin to operate if all you did was to feed yourself, your body, like once a month? You couldn't function. You, you could not make good decisions. You would be tired, worn out. You would be weak. So let me ask you this. If that would happen to us in our physical body, 
what happens to us when we don't feed ourselves with the Word of God. And we wonder sometimes why we can't hold up under pressure. We wonder sometimes why we so easily give give up and we get upset and we get mad at ourselves and, 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 and we, we're, we're like, I'm more in fear than I'm in faith. Well, I think it goes back to the feeding process. How much am I feeding myself? How much am I pouring the Word of God on the inside of me? And that's the reason the Bible says, don't be conformed any longer to this world. There's only one way not to be conformed to this world. You can have Jesus in your heart and love Jesus with all your, all, all your heart. But if you don't renew your mind to the Word of God, you won't see transformation. You'll see transformation when you get born again, but you won't see your habits. You won't see... Uh, much of your uh, the way you talk, the way you do things, you won't see much change in that. The only way that that changes is when I continue to renew my mind because my old ways can still be a stronghold on the inside of me. So I have to continue to re- renew my mind and read the Word of God and speak the Word of God over me. Because in Ephesians, the fifth chapter, it talks about the washing of the water of the Word. All the things that I picked up when I was uh, in the world, even though I'm a new creation, all the way that I used to think and I used to act and do things... The more I get the Word of God on the inside of me, the more that it becomes, uh, it it becomes, it washes me. It continues to wash away the old. And and the the, the new is renewed. And not only that, with all of the pressures and all the things that go on in this world today and will continue to come, we have got to have a steady diet of the Word of God. We have got to build ourselves on the Word of God. And in doing that, we must also remember that we are the family of God. Folks, when we came to this city 29 years ago, our first prayer, Tave and I, with four children, our first prayer was, God, give us a church that looks like heaven. You know, there's a lot of times when you pray things that you have no idea what that's going to cost you. You have no idea. It's just like we say this. God, open these doors for us. God, send me here. God, wherever you want me to go, I'll go. I'll do whatever you want me to go. Do. And then he says, okay. Okay. And then he starts dropping things in your heart. And you're like, whoa, no, no, no. And and it's amazing because when we start saying, God, I want to be used, at that time, God begins to put us in position in places that that literally can upset us or we can even be offended because God says if you're going to go where I need you to go you're going to have to deal with that that's already in your heart and I'm allowing this to come across your path to let you see what's been hidden and God will have a tendency to to allow things to happen in our life that we will turn to Him and we will turn to His Word to be obedient to His Word. And to be obedient to His Word in everything that we do, I'm going to tell you right now, it is not easy. Because a lot of times what happens is you have to die to self to see more of Him revealed on the inside of you. And dying is not pleasurable. So, so we, we, in yielding ourselves to Him, God begins, to, God begins to show us things in our life that needs to change because if we're going to operate in unity and family the way He wants us to, be, to operate the way, the way it is in heaven, then we're going to have to examine ourselves because the Bible tells us that. Examine yourselves. Isn't it amazing that when we get ready to take communion, God says, judge yourself before you take it. Judge yourself, lest you not be judged. So if I sit there and, and, and I'm living in sin and got a whole bunch of unforgiveness and strife and bickering in my life, and I drink that which represents the blood of Jesus, which is the forgiveness of God, that's not good. That's the reason it says, before I even take communion, I need to judge, examine my heart, and look and see if there's anything there that is outside of love and forgiveness. And if there 
is, that's when I bow my head and I said, Father, I repent of what I said. I repent of what I've done. I repent the way I treated somebody. I repent of my attitude. Father, I repent of that. And then free and then cleansing takes place. It's amazing. So the family of God is one with Jesus. And in the family of God, we are all created equal. There is not, there is not one race on this earth that is superior to another. God created every one of us equal. The only way that we think that another race is superior than another race is because that's the way you've been educated growing up. The reason being is because it is not in the Bible. Matter of fact, what is heaven's makeup? What does it look like? Revelations of 5th chapter verse 9 and 10. And they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll to open its seals for you were slain and have redeemed us to God. And watch this. Redeemed us to God by your blood. Who was redeemed to God by the blood? Out of every tribe. And the word tribe there means every single race. Every tribe and tongue people from all different dialects and people that means humanity at large all over the world and nation which is the word ethnos which is which is also means every race you've pulled us out you have redeemed us every single one of us regardless of the color of our skin when we receive Jesus as Lord and Savior we have been redeemed and then he says this now listen to this and made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth praise God okay that's what heaven looks like what does the earth what do we supposed to look like right here same thing listen to this Galatians the third chapter verse 26 and 29 for you are all sons of God if you are born again you are a son and daughter of the living God God. You are sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you were baptized into Christ, you have now put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male or female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. One together. And then listen to this. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And we're heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Listen to what Galatians the fourth chapter verse 6 and 7 says. Because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out one cry, Abba, Father. He is the father of us all. God is the one who has created us. And He has created us precious and beautiful in His sight. And He has created all colors, every race. He has created that. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. So let me ask you this. So what are the main characteristics of this walk when it says walk worthy as the family of God. Let's look at Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verses one through six. It says this, Therefore, become imitators of God. Copy Him and follow His example. As well-beloved children imitate their Father. Again, I go back to the honor of the family The honor of the father and the mother comes through the hands and the actions of the children when they're out. Everywhere you go, that's the reason the Bible says everything you do in word and deed, do it all in the name of Jesus. Everything that I say, everything that everybody is watching me and their eyes are upon me at work or in the marketplace or any place I go, 
there, and, and, and especially if I say, well, I'm a Christian. Well, they're, they, you can have every kind of name and every kind of title in the world. But what they're looking at is they're looking at your activity. They're looking at your behavior. They're looking at your conduct. In other words, they're getting an idea of who Jesus is by you. They're giving an idea of who the Father is by us as His children. And you say, Pastor, and that's, that's a pretty tough statement. Be imitators of God? Well, it would be tough if God said, didn't say this. And I'm going to jump way ahead. Philippians, the second chapter, verses 12 through 15. It says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation. When he says work out, that means that there's something inside of me that causes me now to work out. Out, or there is something now that is being manifested on the outside because of what's on the inside. And then, and, and then he's saying this. He's saying, work out your own salvation. In other words, he said, live as obedient children. Here's walk worthy according to the calling that I have called you. So the world will see. And one of the main one of the main characteristics of that walk is unity. The number one characteristic is love. To love one another as as we love ourselves. To love one another because God loved us first. And to love one another because love is God. To love one another because God sent Jesus Christ here to love us. And we are now out of that love to love one another. But we have to renew our mind or we will continue to have the same actions and the same behavior. And speak the same words and believe the same things. And that's called carnal Christianity it means that I'm living by the flesh I can love Jesus but I'm living by the flesh and, and by living by the flesh I'm not going to bring any honor and glory to God the end goal the end goal of my life and your life is to bring honor and glory to the Father and I have to ask myself am I doing that in my life it's, my, it's not that we're perfect, okay? Don't think that I'm telling you to be perfect. It, it's not perfect. We make mistakes, but do we grow by making mistakes? What do we learn from making mistakes? What do we learn when I say something that comes out of my mouth that's hurtful to somebody else? Am I learning from that? And, and do I have such a relationship with Jesus and such a relationship with the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit can convict me when I do something that's out of the will of God. Because if I can continue to hurt people, speak hurtful words, say things that are not out of love and there's no conviction in my heart, something's wrong with my Christianity. Something's wrong with it. And that's where I've got to say, God, Lord, Holy Spirit, if I do anything that's not pleasing to my Father, Holy Spirit, can Holy Spirit, show it to me. Let me come. And then I've got to be able to respond. It doesn't mean that I'll always respond immediately. Because the Bible says, be angry and sin not. Every one of us is going to deal with anger. Every one of us is going to deal with being upset. Every one of us is going to be, deal with disappointments. Every one of us is going to deal with offense and things of that nature. But here's the key. The key is I know that what is happening right now is not from God. It is from the enemy. But how I handle it must be from God. It must be from God. And, 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 and like the Bible says, if, if somebody is offended, I am to go to them. Yet most of the times we don't want to do that. We hope that fleas show up in their bedroom. We, 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 we sometimes we think differently. But a lot of times, and, and by the way, when, when, when I do, when, when something does happen 
the reason that God wants me to go to them, and a lot of times I've got to get my attitude right, I've got to get my heart right, but then God wants me to go to them because in that God can bring freedom and liberty not only to me, but to the other person. And what am I doing now? I'm honoring what Jesus told me to do. So he said this, Beloved, as you've always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now watch this. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do His good pleasure. Who is working on the inside of you? God is working on the inside of me. That's the reason every single day it's the Holy Spirit of God. And a lot of times we don't even talk to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is not an it. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity, the third person of the Godhead. And I, every single day, I'm saying, every single day when I know that I'm facing something, I've got to talk to somebody or something's uncomfortable or whatever, something that I need to address, I say, Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, help me. Help me. Holy Spirit, help me. And He always does. He always does. And then it says in verse 14, Do all things without complaining or disputing. Oh, no. Pastor, you could have stopped right there before that. You could have closed out. You didn't even have to say that. Do all things without complaining and disputing. Now watch this. Here's the key. Family. Family honoring God. Family living out in the world. Do all things without complaining and disputing. Doesn't mean that you don't have complaints. Every single one of us complains. We always complain. Okay? But here's the key. When I complain, do I allow the Holy Spirit to show me? Instead of complaining, what do I need to do? That's the key. As long as I'm complaining, I'm a part of the problem and will remain part of the problem instead of being the solution. I must ask the Holy Spirit to help me. He says, do all things without complaining and disputing. Why? Because disputing will always bring strife and it will always bring division. And if it brings division, it has now totally wiped out the unity that God has given to us and wants us to operate in. He says, why? Why does he want you to be like this? Verse 15, that you may become blameless, harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. That's what we are called to do. And that light shines brighter when we're in unity. That shine, that light shines bright when we love one another. Yeah, you're going to have disputes in your house. You're going to have complaints in your house, in your marriage, if you're married. And if nobody has ever had a complaint or a dispute, I need you to come up here and teach right now. <laughs> because... We only want the perfect ones to preach. So, so every single one of us have been through that. Every single one of us to, to, to do that. It, it, no matter if you're a child, you're growing up, your husband, wife, we, we, we have that tendency because it's in this flesh. But the more we renew our mind, the more we read the Word of God, the more we talk to the Holy Spirit and ask Him to help us in every situation. Wow. You know what's going to manifest? love and the forgiveness of God if that manifests in our homes guess what our children are going to grow up seeing a lot of us know what we grew up and saw but we don't have to be the products of that we're the products of being born again by the spirit of God we are the children of the living God and when I have prayed for years God help me to walk in love even when we established this church and people were saying vulgar things about me from different races. And when people from different races were rejecting me because we had a church that looked like heaven. And it kept growing. And it kept doing that. Even in that, 
God told me, God spoke to my heart one day when, when I was feeling sorry for myself. And why would somebody say that? Why would somebody do that? And the Lord kept saying to me, son, keep right on trucking. Keep right on trucking and trusting me. He said, keep right on walking in love. Keep forgiving and releasing and don't stop. And Tave and I made that decision. We're not. We're not going to do that. And, and we said, God, give us a church where we are growing to love and to serve one another, even as you came to love and to serve us. And Father, help us to love the way you want us to love. And Lord, let this be a church that the first thing that people understand, the first thing that people are touched with outside of your presence is the love of God. And let the world see that the answer is not uh, uh, some religion. The answer it is not the government. The answer is Jesus. Let the world see that the answer is Jesus and Him only can do this can you say amen let's all stand if you would please praise the Lord hallelujah hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Therefore, become imitators of God. Copy Him and follow His example as well-beloved children. Imitate their Father. Listen to the next verse. And walk continually in love. That is, value one another. Practice empathy and compassion. Unselfishly seeking the best for others. Just as Christ also loved you and gave Himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God slain for you, so that it became a sweet fragrance. That's what we do. And, 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 and here's what I'm asking you. I'm asking you because this is the day and the time that we're, that we're living in that Jesus could come back at any moment at any time. And I don't want him to come back and me be ashamed of my life. I do not want him to come back and then I have to stand face to face with him. And he talks to me about so many things that he had already told me in my heart that I should have repented of, that I should have gotten right that when I was here. I don't want that. When I stand before him, I want to hear these words, well done, good and faithful servant. That's what I want to hear. So when I operate in love, it makes it look like that you're losing ground. When you operate in love, you can never lose. Yeah, people can take advantage of you and say things about you and do things to you. But if you operate in love, you can't lose. Because the Bible is true. Love never fails. And there's many times I've told God, God, I choose to operate in love regardless of what I'm hearing, regardless of what's happening, and regardless of what somebody's saying about me or whatever, I choose to, to pray for my enemies. I choose to bless them who spitefully use me. I choose to do what you told me to do, Jesus. I will not react in a way that is unbecoming and dishonoring of you. I choose to do this. I will not return evil for evil. I choose to do this. I can't tell you how many times that I've had to pray that and, and use it and, and, and speak it. And the more I do it, the more I die to this flesh. And the, and the, and the aroma and the presence of God begins. And I cannot tell you how many times that God has turned situations around for me that I in the natural saw there is no way this can turn around. But I choose love. I choose to do this. It doesn't mean that you're, you're a doormat. But it means that you pray for people. Not only pray for yourself, but you pray for people. How about this? Father, I know exactly why they're acting like that. And 
I pray right now you'll send laborers across their path. I pray right now for their salvation. I find every demonic spirit that is operating in them. And I pray, Father God. I pray for them, Father God. And you say, oh, well, I, ju- I just don't know how to pray for somebody like that. Here's how you do it. Holy Spirit, pray through me right now for that person that you actually love. That is, to me, unlovable. But you love them. Send somebody to love them because I can't. And the, listen to this. And the more I prayed for them, the more the love of Jesus came up in my heart for them. And the person, and the person at one place I was working, the person that attacked me the most, I started praying for them instead because I, I wanted to hit them. You know, I, I, I did. I'm not, I'm not telling you, I, I did. You know, and the Lord said, start praying for them start praying for their salvation and I said Lord can you not raise up another intercessor I don't want to pray for this person I'm just being honest y'all ever been in the you know I, I, and I said I don't I don't want to pray for them <laughs> and he said no you're going to pray for them I said okay and I said well how do I pray for them he said pray for them to get saved he said son the same way that people pray for you when you were living as a hell you were in rebellion the same way I, I started praying and he said pray in the spirit and I started praying in the spirit it was three months later that guy came to me and he said you know one day you told me you prayed for me and I cussed you out I said yeah I remember that and he, he said he said this was on a Saturday he said are you going to church tomorrow I said yeah he said can I join you I mean, I was like, well, yeah, yeah I was stuttering. Yeah, yeah you, can, you can join me. And he said, well, how do I get there? And I told him, and, and, and he showed up, and he got saved. He got saved. I got back in my car that day. I actually went out to lunch with him. I got back in my car that day as we were driving to lunch, and I started weeping like a baby. And I said, God, forgive me. Forgive me from my heart. Forgive me. Help me. Help me to see what you see in people that sometimes I don't. You know? And that's the way we are. Come on, quit looking outwardly, even though we see outwardly. There's nothing wrong with outwardly. Embrace your color. Because God created you like that. Don't try to be like me. Be who God created you to be. Embrace it. That's what God called you. And, and, then, and then we stand and we pray for, the, for those that misuse or mistreat or however they speak or whatever they do. We pray. I will tell you right now, your God, your God will not allow you to continue to be treated in such a manner, in such a way. If you just pray and then let's pray for others and pray for ourselves. Say amen.